My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land will live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, we have two groups of people this morning who are our honored guests. I think the first group are our visitors. Uh, we welcome you and welcome you to this congregation and hope you'll stay around a while and get us, uh, let us meet you. Second honored group are mothers. Uh, the, the mothers in this group looking around uh, are the ones who are so, we're so appreciative of you and, and what you do for the family, your physical family, and particularly what you do also for the family of God here. We love you, mothers. Uh, this morning, I, I'd like to read some verses from Proverbs 23. Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. I think what that says to us is that uh, Solomon will be saying to us in today's language, he would be saying, you young people, make your mother proud. Make your father proud. He would also say, I think to us Christians as a whole, uh, Christians, make your God proud. I think that's, that's my little paraphrase of those verses. Let's pray together this morning. Our Holy Father in Heaven, You are the perfect parent for us. We come to You this morning praising You as our Creator and the One who rules over us and who treats us as children and heirs. We're so thankful, Father, for the care you give us each day. You're faithful to us, Father, and you care about each one of us. Each one of us is important to you, and you know so well that uh, you know us so well that you've counted even the hairs on our heads. We thank you this morning, Father, particularly for our mothers who are molding their children. We're also thankful for Christian mothers who are no longer with us and who have taught us. We pray your blessing on our mothers to continue to give them strength and courage to continue with their all-important tasks for their family and the family of God. We pray, Father, for our congregation this morning. We ask for your help for so many who are suffering from illness and pain. We pray for Becky Pace and her family and the passing of Alan this week. And we pray you'll give her peace in this time of heartache. We continue to pray for healing for Heath Smith, for Barbara Childress, for Nan Stewart. We, pro we pray, Father, you'll grant comfort to them and to their families uh, who administer to them. We pray for all of our sick, Father, and, and for those who serve them. Father, we, we continue to pray with everyone who has struggles in their life, and 
That's probably everyone who's praying to you today. We pray, Father, that you'll help us to see your hand in our lives and we, that you'll help us to seek and appreciate your guidance always. This morning, Father, we just pray for your grace, which came at the terrible cost of the, your precious Son. And it's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Our next song we'll sing this morning will be 285. No, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus. Are you awake now? I thought somebody hit a heavy metal note there for a minute. <laughs> Our next song you'll sing with me will be 513, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. By the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. Promises. 
minds for communion, we will sing uh, 302 in Christ alone. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought. gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth From the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine. Bought with the bread. Precious blood of Christ, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final. Thank you for that song, Justin. It's a powerful message.
<clears throat> As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, I first want to say Happy Mother's Day. There's no greater and more important, more impactful job in all of history than being a mother. Men, amen? Amen. We thank you for that. We're going to read, I'm going to read from 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, starting in verse 1, John says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us. I'm trying to behold. John's saying, listen, listen, listen. Wow, this is great. Listen to this, listen to this. What great love our Father has lavished on us, has poured out on us, that we should all be called children of God. And that is what we are. That is what you are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who has this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. <clears throat> Let's pray as we prepare for the communion. <coughs> our holy God, our Father in heaven, we are we're, we're speechless. Lord, we can't form the words to truly thank you for adopting us as your sons and daughters for bringing us into your family in spite of who we are and what we are but that love dear lord that you poured out on us is beyond our understanding so we we rest in that we accept the guarantee the promise that you made so we thank you for the the sacrifice that we know was required so that we could be redeemed from the slave slavery of sin and and, a, and brought into your family and we thank you for we thank we we mourn for the necessity of the death of our messiah and we thank you for that gift may our communion this morning be an honor to you and to uh, affect the way that we walk about this world we pray through the power of the risen savior jesus amen Let's pray as we continue the, our communion thoughts. Our Father, we continue our, our, our turning our minds towards you, turning our minds back to the cross, knowing that the blood of your Son, of our Savior, was, was spilt on that cross. We, again, Lord, we mourn the requirement for that, and we accept humbly through your grace, the forgiveness that that blood brings. May our communion this morning be an honor to you and, and, and a, uh, that we will continue to think about and cherish the sacrifice that our Savior made. We pray through the power of Jesus. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver, and for those of us that are members here, there are uh, options or ways to, to contribute to support the work of this church body. We have the plates in the foyer and downstairs. There's also opportunities to give online. So we you know we have been blessed beyond what we deserve, blessed way beyond what we need. 
Let's uh, pray and give thanks. Our Lord, our God, we are truly thankful for for choosing to put us in this place in history, in this place in the world. It, Lord, we have more stuff than we can possibly use. Even the poorest among us are, are rich in the world standard. So we ask you to keep us humble. Help us to, to not get tied to the things around us. Lord, we get tied and focused on you as a giver of all things. May we give generously and give to you to the to your honor so that the work uh, to expand the kingdom of God and the na- and the kingdom of Jesus the Christ may may continue we pray we thank you through the power of Jesus amen song of invitation after the lesson will be 703 if you want to go ahead and mark that 703 and before we have our scripture reading and prayer We'll sing 806. If you will, please stand. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by I'll tell and sing love story There on high There with my dear Redeemer No more to die Oh yes, I'll live in glory By and by I want to be of service Along this pilgrim way And lead the lost to Jesus As fervently I pray As day by day I travel I'll keep Him ever nigh And live with Him forever In glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory By and by I'll tell and sing love story There on high There with my dear Redeemer No more to die Oh yes, I'll live in glory By and by The end I know is nearing By faith I look away To yonder home supernal The land of endless day I'll cling to Him forever And look beyond the sky And live with Him forever in glory by and by oh yes i'll live in glory by and by i'll tell and sing love story there on high there with my dear redeemer no more to die oh yes i'll live in glory by and by do remain standing for the scripture reading This morning's reading will be from John chapter 19. John chapter 19 will start in verse 16. Then he delivered them, <clears throat> excuse me, then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but he said, But he said, I am the King of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier apart, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from top in one piece. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be? 
that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. (coughs) Sorry. (laughs) When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Let's pray. Uh, Father, again, we just thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day in which you've blessed us with. Thank you for being able able to uh, assemble here this morning and worship you. We pray that our worship and singing is pleasing in your sight this morning, Father. And we just thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus and this passage in which we can reflect upon. And uh, we just thank you for all of our mothers, which bore us and uh, have had a hand in where we are today with you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Sigma Mountain. You know, um, Jesus, the Word who was with God, who was God, became flesh according to John's Gospel. So God was born of woman so that we could be born of the Spirit. It's an interesting, ironic thing, but truth. I want to, before we begin the lesson today, ask you to uh, remember in prayer uh, my son and daughter-in-law, who tomorrow will be going to court to uh, adopt, hopefully, uh, a little girl named Izzy. Just ask your, your prayer for... Uh, everything to be clear uh, and truth to be seen and for them to, I pray, be able to take this little child and raise her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And um, let's just, would you mind bowing with me now? Pray that. Father, I thank you so much for family. Thank you so much for motherhood we thank you for fatherhood as well we just thank you that you give us so much and we pray oh lord for your help as we live this life that it'll be lived to your glory i just want to lift up tim and stephanie now the court date that's coming up and for this little precious soul izzy that you'll bless her that she can be placed where she belongs and that you will see to that and i pray for your will to be done in Jesus name amen thank you very much Um, today's lesson is you know every year we have Mother's Day right every year we have Father's Day somebody said Mother's Day is when you applaud the mothers and Father's Day is when you beat up the daddies to say get get with it I don't know that that's true but today interesting week we've had this week the Supreme Court's leak concerning Roe versus Wade is made for a very ironic lead-up to celebrating Mother's Day today. It has revealed a lot where some people believe truth and others believe lies. Some uh, call good evil and evil good and even legal definitions have changed. When that happens, what happens? What happens? Do we believe God's word is truth? God's word stands solidly as the very foundation of the pro-life position and culture can't change that but it sure can resist it and rebel against it many scriptures attest to this fact that what is conceived in a human mother's womb is a human child and that child bears the image of God and many scriptures point to this but one passage which is not commonly used to look at this is 1st Timothy chapter 2 I invite you to turn there 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, which makes this hard-hitting statement. And it'll be the kind of thesis for the lesson today. Paul writes, For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing. Let that sink in a minute if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. Those words, difficult as they are, 
I think they need to sink in. Yet, she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in the faith and love and holiness with self-control. This basically states, as hard as this is, that deception brought transgression. And childbearing, childbearing brings salvation. If the mother continues in faith and love and holiness and self-control. Now, what is this all about? What does childbearing have to do with salvation? Well, two things are exposed here. Deception brought death. Motherhood brings life. Any argument with that? Because God promised way back in the beginning, first pages of our scriptures, that through the seed of woman, Satan would be defeated. Then at the grand finale of our Bibles, Revelation chapter 12, I invite you to turn there. Revelation chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. I want to read just down through about verse 12. This is John writing. He wrote the Gospel of John. He also wrote the book of Revelation. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and with a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was with child and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He deceives the whole world. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But, listen to this, woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. This passage tells us of a great and wondrous sign that appeared in heaven. And notice the death and life in this. What is this? A heavenly sign of a woman bearing a child that Satan wants to destroy. Why? Because motherhood brings life. Salvation is brought down to earth through motherhood. Okay? A furious Satan is also here, and he wants to kill the child. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, again, Paul takes us back to the very first pages of the Bible, to Genesis 3, which tells us how sin entered this world. Adam and Eve and the serpent are the characters there. And notice, Paul states these words in Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, as a historical event that has spiritual import for all time. It has life-giving impact, not just for women, but also for humanity itself. This is God's arrangement. Women and motherhood are designed by God for a purpose. We know that childbearing and motherhood are critical to the continuing existence of the human race, right? If nobody has babies for the next hundred years, it's over. For humanity. 
But more, God made childbearing and motherhood essential not just for procreation, but for eternal salvation for all mankind. So, happy Mother's Day. Motherhood. God made mothers through his own plan and design, and he ordained that through a mother, God would give us his son. We human beings share not only the image of God, but through the seed of woman, God brought us salvation. What does all this imply? Well, God's people, Old Testament and New, have basically been pro-life, pro-marriage, pro-motherhood, pro-faith, love, holiness, and self-control. But we live in a fallen world where God's word and God's ways are often rejected. Abortionism, if I may coin a word, comes from a non-biblical view of womanhood, of life, of marriage, of motherhood, and it does violence to the entire fabric of the biblical teaching of humanity itself. This goes against the value of human life. And every human being, every human is made in God's image, in God's likeness. Abortionism treats this life with complete disrespect and disregard. Abortionism calls itself the right to choose and women's health care. That is deceptive, lying language. In reality and truth and in practice, it is a grasp for power to kill a human being before he or she is born. Health care? Care for the health might sometimes truly be in consideration, such as in a tragic situation where one must die for the other to live, and God help us in such cases. But abortionism is far from that. Abortionism is not health care in any such sense of the word. True health care must consider the lives of both mother and child. Jenny and I personally support two pro-life ministries. One ministry involves giving free ultrasounds to women who are pregnant. And these ministries place themselves in areas where women would naturally go to seek an abortion. If you go online, you can find testimony of literally hundreds of women who were seeking to abort their child. And when they saw their baby on ultrasound and heard that heartbeat, something changed. Well over 50%, some people say 80% of the young women who seek abortion and yet hear that heartbeat and see that child reverse course and give birth instead. Satan wants to hide that from you. It's not a child, it's a choice. No, it's not a choice. It's a child. There's another ministry that picks up there to help these new mothers with their children to either place them in adoption or help them to raise them. Pure religion calls on us, the church, not simply to stop abortion, but to help the fatherless. I believe that we're called to show the love of God by helping the living, born or unborn, and build a life culture in Christ. Genesis 3, 14 through 16 Turn there with me. Very first couple of pages of your Bible. Genesis 3, 14 through 16. God is cursing the serpent because he had deceived Eve. Verse 14, the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. As God cursed Satan for deceiving Eve, God spoke concerning her seed and the seed of the serpent. Eve's seed would ultimately bring deliverance from Satan when the heel of her seed came down on the head of Satan. 
we, we can't unpack most of this, but let's just talk about it a little bit. Who is the seed of woman that will defeat Satan? Is it obvious to you? I hope so. Does this help explain the sign that John saw in heaven in Revelation 12 and the childbirth of 1 Timothy 2? Does it help a little bit? Saved through childbearing? What in the world? Well, here's what in the world. This life is not without great struggle and pain. Let's go back to John 19 in our reading today, and we'll finish in that passage and a little bit in Revelation. John chapter 19, where Jesus is crucified. John's gospel is the only one that tells us about Jesus' mother being there. I want to reread that again. Verse 16, finally Pilate handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha, and there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Everybody could understand those languages who came by there. At least one of them. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate. Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said or claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each. The undergarment remaining, this garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's Psalms 22. They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. God knew this was coming, didn't he? And this is what the soldiers did. Verse 25 through 27. Near the cross stood Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. I think there's four women there. But when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his own home. John's gospel is the only one that tells about Jesus' mother at the cross. Here in verse 25 to 27, the word mother occurs five times in three verses. It's the most dense section about the word mother in the Bible. God the Father has no mother, but God the Son does. Think about that. Ironically, Jesus created the very mother who bore him. <laughs> and this mother is human. Mary, the mother of God's own son, fulfilled the promise God made way back in Genesis 3. The serpent bruises Jesus' heel, but Jesus bruises the head of the serpent. Revelation 12.9 tells us that ancient serpent is Satan, the devil. Notice that there are three women in here at the cross. I think four. Um, Mark 15 speaks of Salome, which is probably Mary's sister. But all three that are named are named what? Mary. Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the wife of Cleopas. Mother of James and Joseph, Mark 15 tells us. And Mary Magdalene. The name Mary, do you know what that comes from? The word Mary sounds like something happy, but actually it comes from the word Mara, which means bitter. Life was far from easy for these Jewish mothers in this day. And it is for many mothers. Remember the story of Ruth? We just read it recently. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, Naomi has, is coming back from Moab to Bethlehem 
after she lost her husband and her two sons, all her family, except for a daughter-in-law, comes with her. And when the women of Bethlehem see Naomi coming, they say, could this be Naomi? Names mean something. Naomi means pleasant. Pleasant. But Naomi answers them and says, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has made my life very bitter. Call me bitter. Because that's what God, God has made my life to be. I know, I know at the foot of the cross where Mary, the mother of Jesus, is watching here these three women, each named Mara, bitter, are witnessing the death of the one they love the, the most. But, as in the story of Ruth, God has a way of turning our mourning into dancing. It's amazing. By the end of the book of Ruth, three chapters later, by the grace of God, a baby is born. Ruth, in her motherhood, saves the day. <laughs> and this baby will grow up and become the father of Jesse. His name is Obed. And he fathers Jesse, and Jesse fathers David, who becomes the king of Israel, through whom comes the Christ, the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior of the world. All through the Scriptures, all through the Scriptures, motherhood is honored. And yet, it is not easy. It may even be very bitter at times. God ordained that salvation would come through childbearing, bearing, let me say it right, childbearing of the promised seed of woman. Is it any wonder then that Satan would hate childbearing? Does that surprise you? That he would seek to dishonor motherhood? Does that surprise you? Is it any wonder that Satan defends his lies and deception with a vengeance? He is full of wrath and he's come down. Just listen to the voices of those who promote abortion today. Who is whispering murderous lies into the hearts and minds of these people? The seed of woman who defeated the serpent has come. He has come. Satan knows his time is short. And so what is his plan? What's his plan? Go back to Revelation 12 with me. The very last thing it says, he can't get the woman... And so verse 17 says, The dragon was enraged at the woman, and he went off to make war against the rest of her seed. To those who obey the commands and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Satan knows his time is short, so he makes war against the woman's children. That's where we live. until Jesus comes again. The beauty of childbirth is still with us, is it not? What a great gift. What a wonderful blessing. But what a struggle sometimes. The blessing of motherhood is still with us, is it not? But there's also a lot of pain, a lot of struggle, a lot of trial. The glory of God's salvation has been and is firmly, eternally established through the seed of woman. Mary, the mother of Jesus, has brought forth the seed that gives us salvation. But how did Mary's motherhood bring salvation? It was by the sacrifice of the seed. Mary was there. She was there watching Jesus die as her seed paid the price for my sins and your sins and the sins of everybody and purchased for God from every people, tribe, language, and nation, people who are born of God. She saw it and she felt the heartbreak. The price was bitter. But I'll tell you what, Salvation was soon coming, and it was very sweet. 
Three days later, Jesus Christ rose from the grave. He defeated sin. He defeated death. And he will ultimately put Satan in his place. Mary witnessed her son alive again. I believe that. I don't have the word to say that except I know this. In Acts chapter 1, she's there waiting in prayer with 120 who are praying because they know that Jesus is alive and he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And that's the last time we hear of her in Scripture. Her crucified son rose to everlasting life and reigns as king of the universe. And listen to me, he's coming back. He's coming back. Satan's time is short. It is short. And then he will ultimately be thrown in the lake of fire. Matthew 25 says it's the place prepared for the devil and his angels. God ordained motherhood to make a difference. Think of it. Motherhood brings life. God used the seed of woman to save us all. So happy Mother's Day. Would you pray with me? Most Holy Father in Heaven, we thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, and sending him here through the seed of woman to be born into our world where good and evil are all around us still. We thank you, Father, for your watch over your children. You hear our cries. You know our needs. You supply us with all that we have. We praise you for sending the perfect sacrifice for our sins so that we might be forgiven and made righteous through him. All of our love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control are from your spirits working within us, bearing fruit to your name's honor and glory and to our own good. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can enjoy your way of goodness in a world that's lost its way. May we love truth and delight in you and in your goodness, even in a world that delights in wickedness and resists truth and falls for Satan's deceiving lies. Holy Father, open the eyes of those who are deceived. Help us to confess your truth in a world of lies and stand for it and not shrink back. Make us lights of your truth. And please, Lord, give our children life in Jesus Christ as well. May our children listen to your calling, walk in your ways, follow Jesus Christ in obedient faith. Help us, Father, to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of your word, your will, your ways, so that they will walk with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and be born again of the Spirit for life everlasting. For we know he who died for our sins and was buried who rose again on that third day and reigns at your right hand, will come again. He will claim his own and bring us all to eternal glory with you. We pray in Jesus' life-giving and saving name. Amen. Here's your blessing right here. <sighs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May the Lord empower his church to be a life-giving force in this world of death and deception. Help us to speak the truth, O Lord, and stand firm in Jesus. Amen. If you're here today and you need to respond to God's call, He's calling. He wants you. He gave His Son for you. And He's calling you to come. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come. If you're needing prayer, this church, we're gathered as a family to pray for each other and hold each other up in prayer. If you need anything at all, please come while we stand and sing to encourage you. Sometimes are here Filling in hearts with fear Freedom we own Oh dear Now is at stake Humble your heart to God Saves from the chastening rod Seek the way pilgrims trod Christians away Jesus is come
Lord within will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meeting in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward man. Good morning again. You may be seated. Again, bless the mothers and hope you have a blessed day. When I was sitting out here, I was just thinking, grandmothers, this is a double honor for you. We have a few announcements this morning, uh, uh, then prayers and a prayer, then you'll be dismissed. Uh, thank you, Greg, for that sermon. Um, we want to remember Madison. Uh, last Tuesday, I think that was May the 3rd, she gave birth to a baby girl, uh, Hayden, and they're both doing fine. I know uh, Ted and Scotty's rejoicing, as we are. This is their first grandchild. Uh, today, small groups will resume. If you're not in a small group and you'd like to be, please see one of the elders or John Curtis. Uh, the lessons for the small groups are in the foyer, and I believe downstairs also. May the 22nd, we'll have a graduation recognition. Uh, Talia Clark will be graduating. Uh, Rhea Cox who's uh, one of our uh, members' daughter, will be graduating. Aiden Harrison and Emily Sutterfield. So let's remember these four in our prayers. And again, this will be two weeks from today at 5 o'clock. I want to give you uh, a total update on Partners for Africa. We did mention it last Sunday. Uh, we've, uh, your generous hearts, you have given over $28,000 uh, for Bibles in uh, Africa. Also for a science wing that's just been completed and construction continuing on a, on a building still. Plus, uh, whales, water whales have been drilled. So again, thank you for your generous hearts. Uh, Butch and uh, Ernie Cooper just delivered 275 boxes to be shipped to uh, to Africa, and that's the school supplies that were in the, four, uh, in the fellowship hall for some time. So those are being shipped. And again, thank you for your generous hearts. We uh, also have a family camp coming up uh, June the 17th through the 19th. And this is a family camp. It's, it is for everyone. We'd like to encourage you to go. If you haven't been, it's, it's a beautiful camp, uh, camp uh, to know him. So uh, it's a beautiful area. So uh, we just encourage everyone to go and help support our youth and encourage our youth. And if you, have, uh, if you need any further details, please see our brother Kendall Harrison. We do have a few prayers, uh, several prayers on our list. Again, let's remember Becky Pace and the loss of her husband uh, this past Thursday, I believe, Alan. Um, the funeral arrangements is in the bulletin. It will be at the Hamilton uh, Funeral Home on Hickson Pike. Uh, that's Tuesday, May the 10th. Visitation from 10 to 12, and the service is at 12. Let's remember Becky and her family in our prayers. We'll continue to lift up our brother Heath Smith and. Uh, in our prayers and his treatment that he has continually going, let's remember Heath and the treatments. Also, uh, Scotty's uncle, who is battling a brain tumor, we need to continue to remember him. And uh, Mary Margaret's uh, brother, who is battling pancreatic, pancreatic cancer, I believe. Let's remember him also.
We do want to continue to lift up, uh, as it was announced this morning, Ted and um, Tim and Stephanie Nance um, and little Izzy. Uh, they do have a court date tomorrow to see if they can get custody of uh, Izzy. So let's remember them in our prayers. Also, um, we want to lift up our nation to you uh, uh, in prayer to God. And uh, so let's, let's remember uh, the prayers for our nation. We have several birthdays this week. Uh, Ashley Page, uh, May the 10th. Uh, Kyle Green on May the 11th. Uh, Brother Joe Spencer, May the 11th. Uh, Rachel Bible, May the 14th. And Jack Sutterfield, May the 14th. And we do ask everyone to check the bulletin and your emails for further announcements and uh, announcements, updates, and uh, details in the bulletin. Uh, the information is there. Please uh, go to those sources and check, check them out. That's all the announcements I have this morning. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for this hour that we could come worship you in spirit and truth. We just pray that our worship to you, Father, was in order. And Father, we pray that the things that were said and done just gave you glory and praise in those things. Father, we're just mindful of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus. We thank you for your love for us that you uh, sent him to die on the cross for our sins. We thank you for his death, burial, and resurrection that we have life et eternal with you. Pro Father, we do pray that you'll continue to lift us up in your walk, uh, in our walk, Father, with you. Uh, we just pray that we'll be encouragement to one another, help us to remain faithful all the days of our lives. Father, you have commanded us to, uh, to love. And Father, we know that hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Father, you have commanded us to be a light for you, to show your praise and glory. We know that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Father, we pray that you'll go with us, Father. We stumble, Father, daily. Uh, some things may be just small issues, Father, but those things have caused us to sin and fall short of your glory. Father, we, when we sin, we pray for your forgiveness. We know your mercy is there. Your mercy is new every morning. And Father, we know that you have blessed us with your grace. We pray, Father, for your continued grace upon us and your peace. We lift this prayer up to you in our Lord and Savior's most holy name. It's in his name we pray. Amen.